right, hello everybody. This is the Writer's Showcase with your host Tom Otto, and I've got for you today a special little surprise that our uh, Karen Dash rep had left for us, had accidentally left for us. Or maybe we possibly may have taken it from him uh, unwillingly, perhaps. Uh, but we, this is the brand new 849 metal fountain pen. And we've got this and we've got uh, also the new collection that we brought in from Paul Smith uh, and Karandash. They, also, they came together as a collaboration and uh, came out with a new line of 849 pens. Uh, this is the 849 metal in the ballpoint version. And uh, it's it's a it's a bestseller. It's one of the best ballpoint refills that you could find. It just writes beautifully, and it's a very simple design, hexagonal, um, very office supply seeming, but it just has a beautiful Swiss made quality to it. So, uh, coming to you from our break room again today. We don't have the office downstairs, but. Today we're uh, uh, kind of a little bit pressed for time. I was busy with uh, trying to get out the news that we had just gotten today about uh, Sailor Gentle uh, inks, the original set of uh, six ink colors, including apricot, grenade, uh, epinard, uh, sky high. They're all coming back and we're so, I'm, I mean, I have a couple bottles myself and I'm just excited for the fact that when I'm out of them, I won't be out of the ink. I will finally, I'll be able to get more of it. And I haven't had, I haven't, I haven't had apricot in a while. I've tried it before, but I haven't had it in a while. And it's one of those cool orange colors that uh, I'm not a big fan of orange, but uh, it just it just hits with me somehow. So I'm really excited for those and uh, I think a lot of people are as well because I've been seeing a lot of chatter on social media ever since we posted the picture earlier today. So uh, without further ado, let's let's take a look. Uh, you know what? Let's take a look first at our new weekly dip which just went live on our website two o'clock this afternoon. It's a cross which you'll see backwards here because it's reflected but Here, so it's a cross across classic century, and it is a fountain pen. So this is the classic century lustrous chrome fountain pen. I'll twirl that there. So what's cool about this, besides the fact that we've dropped the price to a ridiculously low price, is you know, and, and you caught me here. I was trying to actually remove the cap by pulling it off and. Um, that's typical of most classic century or century two models is that they have a pull off cap but this is special because this was an edition that came out back in 2013 I believe that has a screw off cap that actually screw posts onto the back here for a hundred percent secure fit that cap is not coming off which is, is a is a big deal for a lot of people who like posting their caps. They want to make sure it's posted on nice and secure. And it's not a very deep uh, post. It just, it's about like a turn. I would say like a, like three quarters of a turn on there. And the same deal with going on the front end here too. It's a very small amount of turn here. And like I said, made of a uh, lustrous chrome material here. Let me just back over here so I can take a look at it. So it's lustrous chrome. It's a beautiful polished chrome, mirror-like finish. Has got uh, lines, engraved lines going down the side uh, in a pattern. It has the several grouped lines in a blank space, uh, repeating all around the barrel here. The section is quite thin, and this is uh, this is perfect if you love thin pens. Uh, me, I'm not so much a thin pen type of person. You see this looks very small in my hands, but you could post it, make it reasonably longer here. So it's so it rests more comfortably. That cap is really needed for it. It's got a lighter weight to it, even though it's a metal pen. It's very slender, so it has a nice light weight. I did not ink it yet, but I'll show you what that's all about in a second. So 
we have also too is uh, in the email if you belong in our email newsletter list you'll see too is that we suggest to put engraving which you would do right on the blank spot that's here so there's a blank area and excuse the fingerprints there it's just the nature of the material is that when it's such a mirror polish like this it's going to get fingerprints pretty quick but you can always have a cloth on hand to wipe up your writing instrument so here is uh, we have a cartridge converter type system although it does not take a converter it takes the slim cross cartridges which we will find if we open up the bottom of our box and take a look over here we'll pop this guy open here so the slim cross cartridges are proprietary and they're even so more proprietary in the fact that these are specifically for their slimline models like the Spire which has been discontinued and for this classic century model which they're actually updating in the next couple of months with a new line of these that's why we have these on on closeout uh, making room for the for the newer models here but this is the uh, black ink cartridge here. So what you would do is you just plug this guy in. And you know what? Just so we don't have to wait for that to reach the feed here, I'm just gonna put this off to the side and we'll talk about a pen that's already inked up. The 849, if you're looking at it this way here, the ballpoint of which this line is known for is a slender pen. It's about as slender as this cross is here, but it's hexagonal sided. So it's got a little bit of, a little bit extra girth to it. These are how they come. It's got the little wrapper that's around the outside here. The, the beauty of this is really in the refill. The, the Swiss made Goliath ballpoint refill is just, it's a beast. This thing writes like no other. It has a high capacity. Uh, customers for years have been swearing by this thing. And uh, from the ones that I've used in the past, like I swear by it too. It just lasts such a, such a long time. And the smoothness on it is just unparalleled. It's expensive. You know, it's, a, it's got a Swiss price to it as, uh, as I've been told that from, uh, from one of the creative arts people that, uh, um, represent Karandash. I'm just trying to, there we go. So I'm just screwing the top clicker part here back on. Nice smooth click action. I know we're talking about the fountain pen, but just wanted to give the ballpoint a shout out first. Yeah, so that's the Heat 49 ballpoint. It's been a bestseller for years, beloved by many, available in a large number of colors, including these pop line fluorescent colors. This is the orange. This is the what they term as either purple or pink. They sometimes they term it differently. But this is the 849 fountain pen. And the ballpoints they go for about 20, I believe, depending upon if you get the box or not. They're, they're relatively inexpensive. The fountain pen brings you up into a retail of $65, and we do intend, uh, they are allowing a discount on it, so of course we you know, love passing that on to our customers and you know, give these at a discount as well. I believe our, price, our sale price for these will be $51.95. They have the same type of, uh, it's, a, it's an aluminum barrel pen, and it has a, a, a like a lacquered sort of finish to it. That's why it's got kind of like a polished and almost like a rounded uh, profile to those uh, hexagonal sides. I feel like the the 849 ballpoint's got a little bit of a sharper edge to those uh, to those points, to those corners. Seems like this is a little bit more rounded. I believe that's intentional for 
you know, a, a smoother feel around it. Like it just, it just has like a nicer sort of texture. So it has a, uh, has that, that same iconic looking angled clip. Both the, uh, both finials are, are uh, chrome. And on this end of the pen here is a, what they call, I think an isograph marking, or so that's the isograph logo. It's like an icon of theirs. I mean, it's a hexagonal pen. So everything with, with this collection is all about the hexagon. So, so this is, uh, you know, it's, it's iconic, it's part of the style, and they reiterate it in the shape of the pen and also in that, uh, in that icon. Same thing with the nib here, too. The nib has got a graphic here of the, the isograph, uh, the, the hexa hexagon, uh, stainless steel nib, plastic feed, plastic section here. The cap comes off and goes on with a nice snap. I like that snap. You can hear it. It's like a, a metal sheath that's over here. It just snaps so nicely in place. And you could like turn it, you, know, you could turn the body around. It's not going to unscrew the section from the barrel, which is nice. So it's kind of like you could fidget around with it a little bit, just get that nice, it just pops on so nicely. So I pulled it off here, revealed the nib. Yeah, it's it's a it's a thin it's a very thin section and it's a big step down from the barrel to the section, but I, I don't know it's not really bothering me so much. The nib itself is just it's a beauty. This is just a regular stainless steel, plain old stainless steel nib, but it just writes so smoothly. I'm just whizzing around here. Scribbling and doodling. And I have Jay Herbin's sixteen seventy anniversary. In ocean blue. or Blue Ocean, whichever way you'd like to say it. And you're saying to yourself, okay, well, how did he get that in there? Well, the fountain pen comes originally with an idyllic blue cartridge in there, which is one of the chromatics colors, the, uh, the newer line of Carandash colors that came out for fountain pen ink cartridge. It's an international size cartridge. However, as you might be able to notice, what I did here is I threw in a Visconti converter. There will be a Carandash converter specifically for this pen and an Ecuador pen. It's a $10 converter, and I had found that this Visconti fits, and it fits in very nice and snug. It's a, it's a really, it just snaps right into place, and it gives me no problem with being able to draw ink up in there. So you might, there might be other options. I haven't tried them all yet, but there could be other standard size converters. Let's say like a Waterman converter, an Aurora converter maybe, uh, some other generic type of Schmidt converters. I did try a Monte Verde uh, a plastic converter, but that didn't fit, the, the coupling didn't fit on there. Um, but this is uh, this could use a converter. It just doesn't come with it when you purchase the pen, so it's not included. But for anybody that's aware of, you know, that uses a, a Lamy All Star or Safari, uh, a lot of pens in the fifty dollar, forty to fifty dollar range are are less and less times these days are coming without converters. So. You, might have to pick it up separately. Uh, also too, I did not do this yet, is posting. So it snaps on the back and posts nicely. So you try to shake that guy out. It's not coming off. It's not coming off. That cowboy's not getting off that bowl. So it is a very long posted pen. I don't, let me see, I, got, I brought my, uh, my ruler out here because we were interested in dimensions. We want to talk about dimensions. So 
let's take a look at what this is lengthwise with the cap posted. Seven inches. That's a long posted pen. But since it's only made out of aluminum and it has a fairly light weight to that cap, it doesn't feel that bad with it posted on the back like this. It doesn't feel back heavy at all. It doesn't really add a whole lot of weight to the pen, although you could, like I just was doing before, you could certainly write with it without the cap on. It still rests in the uh, web between my index and thumb here. So let's get a measurement of what we have here. That's about five inches, right around five inches with it uncapped. And we'll do a capped measurement. That's seven inches for it to be a uh, cap post. That's a long posting pen. So you're like, you know, five and five eighths inches long with the cap closed. This weighs about a half of an ounce total. I have the converter in there too, so that would add a little bit more weight to it. And if you do already have a fluorescent orange, this is right, you know, a perfect match. They use the same exact PMS color swatch or, you know, what, what have you to match these colors up and it is vibrantly vivid. Um, to go over the line with you guys, these are the available colors which will be coming in the next month or so. I was told late May, early June. You have uh, plain old white, uh, matte black, matte blue. I think this is going to be a matte. This is what they call sapphire blue. This is one the one that they call either fluorescent purple or fluorescent pink. We call it the fluorescent pink. I think it should be uh, similar as this hue is here. And then that was the orange that we saw here. So you can see like they, you know, like it's the fluorescents are just hard to photocopy because you can't, you can't make a good, uh, a good ink uh, that would be able to print on paper that would show that fluorescence well enough without going into, uh, you know, different printing methods. We have fluorescent yellow and then fluorescent yellow green, which we're just calling fluorescent green. So we don't want to confuse that there. So just to kind of go over the, details here. Uh, the only other thing I didn't mention is that it does come in a box. So it does have like this nice little box here. And uh, and like we said before, a piston pump uh, or a long cartridge. So it's, it's an international size or a, a long uh, international type cartridge. Will come in medium fine or extra fine. So this was the medium for those that were interested. And the writing experience, I'll just talk a little bit about that before moving on here. Writing experience with this medium nib is just very, very pleasurable. It's, it's, a, it's a very wet, flowing nib, smooth. Let's do smooth. This gives me no hesitation whatsoever. It filled up beautifully when I put the converter in it. Really the only thing, my, my gripe about this is going to be that, that step down and that section. That's gonna be the, uh, you know, the make or break for a lot of people, I feel. But the writing experience is just like, it's A plus, it's on par. And I mean, for, for a pen that's going to be, uh, you know, 51, 95, you know, $65 retail, uh, you really, you know, it's it's a it's a great competitor. I feel to you know your your all star, or you know your mid your mid to entry level type pen. It's a beautiful beautiful pen. Fun with the different colors that are available. And you can see where, let's, let's take a look. I just wanna see if I can get some of that, some of that beautiful shimmer. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, 
Yeah, so this is the J. Urban 1670 Ocean Blue with this with the uh, with the gold shimmer. So when that kind of settles a little bit, we could see once it starts drying, we could see that nice gold shimmer in there. So this is Paul Smith and Garandash collaboration. This is a set that we uh, we obtained to that has all of the different colors. Although the colors are sold individually, this is a set that contains all of the colors in the collection. And this is version two of this collection. Version one was a limited edition that had sold out last year. This set had come out late last year, and we we're just kind of picking up on you know the the inventory now. This is a fantastic uh, collection. Like I mentioned earlier with the uh, standard 849 pop lines, uh, 849 metal collection here, you know, it, it's, it's one of the best selling, uh, you know, er, entry level type ballpoint pens that just have a tremendous amount of quality to them. And that's what Karen Garandash gives you is that awesome Swiss quality. And the this collection from Garandash and Paul Smith gives you that quality with a fashionable amount of uh, color and design. And really the, the just the main draw of these is that you have a set of unique colors that were uh, handpicked by Paul Smith based on his, uh, his design ethics and his, uh, his taste. So you have this one I believe is called Damson. It's a nice purple. Although my camera's kind of throwing the color off a little bit on the greener side of things. That's a that's a purple there. You have a racing green, which kind of reminds me of like a uh, like a British green. See, it's got the Paul Smith signature on the back here. Swiss made. Same Goliath. Uh, ballpoint refill that you would expect out of a 849 pen. Several different cool blue colors and this is like a light pastel blue. And that's what I characterize this as a very pastel, you know, uh, muted, toned down colors, very contemporary looking. Definitely not the same as your fluorescent everyday models that are very bright. These are toned down. They have a subdued quality about them, but are unique enough, I feel, to stand out from the collection. We have this little brochure that's here. So I'll tell you about the collection. It has a little picture of Paul Smith on here and his very colorful inside of his jacket. He does enjoy using Garandash pens, as many designers do from, uh, I know Andy Warhol, Warhol was big with Garandash back in the day. So that is the Paul Smith collection. And like I said, this is the tin, that, uh, collector's tin that we have that offers all of the colors. However, you can buy each one of these individually, which comes packaged in its own uh, commemorative uh, metal tin package. So we shall put that away and come back to our cross, which we had loaded with a black ink cartridge uh, just a little, well, a few minutes ago. I'll give this a go here. A little bit of a hard start here. That sometimes could happen with cartridge filled pens is that when you pierce the cartridge, the ink may not just get down as quickly as you'd like it to. So I'm kind of forcing it down right now by gently squeezing the cartridge and just noticing if I start to see ink bubbles or, yep, see. I just started, I got like a little ink bubble came up to the side there. That means that we're there. Okay. Let's take a look 
here. Let's see the, oh, there we go. Oh, just a little patience. Here it kind of has a bit of a drag, has a has a bit of feedback to it. Not necessarily, I wouldn't say scratchy, but you know it's there. Like you could you could feel the texture of the nib. And I think it just needs to be broken in just a little bit here because I feel like it's getting better as I'm writing with it. Either that, just as at the very start of the ink flow, it just doesn't have enough ink coming out of that tip. That's like one of my favorite things to write is sometimes it's just like just saying hello. I don't know. It's like it's almost as if I'm saying hello to the pen itself. Hello, pen. You know, it's just seeing how it's doing. Yeah, I, I, I would probably say, you know, like, I. I it, it kind of gave me a little bit of a trouble at first, but once I started getting getting it going here, it, it writes nicely. Has good flow. I think this is li this is listed. This one actually is not the same model as the one that we have up on the on the website right now. This is a fine point. The one that we have available uh, at our weekly dip special is is a medium point. Um, so you could expect a bit of a broader stroke. Then this is producing here for the medium, which is nice if you're trying to get this type of effect with a, a shimmer ink. It brings it out more if you have a broader nib. It doesn't have to be broad, but it does have to be a bit thicker than your typical fine or extra fine to really bring out the, the shimmer and the sheen, as they say. All right. So that's our mess that we just created today. Lots of, lots of doodling, lots of scribbling and, and writing random words on here and just giving this a, a good old stress test. And, you know, really for me, and this is a taste thing, um, I don't prefer thin pens, but I know a lot of you out there do. A lot of you like that very thin profile, thin section. Um, but me, I, I prefer something a bit thicker, uh, like the 849. Uh, the 849 kind of had that step and a thin section as well, but not as thin as, as this is here. And uh, it's a it's a beautiful, elegant pen. I would say it's a good a good pick for mom because uh, you know this is a more feminine, delicate hands tend to prefer the thinner uh, types of pens. So uh, you know, nice little Mother's Day gift with her name engraved on it. I'm just putting it out there for you. And uh, what we also looked at here today, I just want to go over the eight four nine fountain pen. And uh, this guy is, is going to be coming sometime in uh, late May, early June. So I would definitely, uh, it's up on our website right now. If you want to get a notification when it comes in, I would definitely do that. If you're really you know, looking forward to this and are eager for this pen, check it out and put your name down for the email notification. When it gets in, when we actually physically have the inventory, it will send you a notification with uh, with an email 
I'll let you know it's ready for purchase. So we have a limited quantity of these coming in when we uh, when we get them, and we expect them to come to go right on out because these are these are some pretty cool pens for the for the the lower price tag. So and uh, yeah, so. That's it uh, for this week's episode. I hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out and talking about pens. So um, if, uh, if you have any questions, just feel free to, to uh, send me an email at tom at goldspot.com if you wanted to go check out. Uh, we looked at uh, Monte Grappa Game of Thrones. We've uh, checked out uh, Lamy Petrol. Uh, we've, we've looked at a whole bunch of stuff and it is continuing every week and I, I enjoy coming in here and talking with you guys and showing you new things and you know I hope you guys enjoy you know watching them uh, you know I get some feedback from customers and it's always good to see that uh, you guys appreciate this sort of stuff so um, you know until next week thank you and have a great day